Down to five seconds left. Is that ball? Did he take him on? Tackle. Now, now, this is one we can look at. I think Lockie Neal contributed to that Absolutely. more than the tackler. 100% correct, Gary. And this is where we don't want to get to. Steele committed the body as per usual. How a good tackle, Watlock. See, even then with the Motlop tackle, I reckon in a little way Howard almost flexed the head to try and make it contact the dirt. And I don't like to say that, Tim, but is it a dangerous tackle or not? I don't think that one's a dangerous no, tackle. No, I don't either. Even though the head hit the ground, I think it hit voluntarily. <laughs> not something we do regularly on this program anyway and, and get ourselves immersed into some of the minutia of uh, tribunal, but right now the tackling situation needs some time dedicated to it. I know you're passionate about it. Welcome to you, Ralphie. So you're here for the technical detail. Um, you're across what constitutes a dangerous tackle and all the things better than, than we are, so uh, welcome. Good Thank to have you. you on board. Over to you, Bucks. You know, my, my biggest concern is that we're penalising... Players are missing weeks of footy for something that other players aren't. So it's not just getting a, a, a free kick wrong or right. It's actually weeks. So we've had, in my view, Zach Merritt and Taylor Adams, who missed out on the opportunity to play on one of the biggest stages in, in football at the moment, I, and I think based on an action that has been allowed or has been overlooked in other circumstances. So Ralphie's here. He knows. You know the tribunal. Yep. You know the breakdowns, how they come to those conclusions. But I, I just want to run through a few. Okay, so before you, you say do... inconsistency. Yes. Absolutely inconsistent. Uh, uh, at not, the MRO or not, the tribunal? No, but not if they've been... If they've been reported, it's been consistent. They've all oh, yeah, I, th I think... You're talking about ones that haven't been cited. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, we are missing... We're either... Missing plenty, or we're pulling ones up that, we're, right or, or actions are going up that shouldn't be. And yeah. we've got to make our mind up on why we're doing what we're doing. Is it the action, or is it the consequence? Work and, and that's it. so. Let's look at the the Lockie Neal uh, Callum Ward one, which is probably the most topical one. And you were doing this game, Gaz, and you actually called in it that you and Jordan both thought that Neil had in some way contributed to that. Do you do you see that at all? Went back and had a look at it. And that's harsh on Lockie, right? So in the end, I would say, having looked at that again, is that Lockie got tackled and then just conceded the tackle and yep. allowed himself to be to be taken to ground in a really easy manner. Like that, 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 and and his obligation might be drawing the free kick manner. Well, that's what I thought. I didn't think he tried to fight through the tackle. I didn't think he tried to stand up, but. The action then, and Ralphie, you'll tell me this, it's the, it's the action that warrants the week. So it, it's not his obligation to stand up. And I think what the decision the AFL made there was, if you can see there, he had, your leg locks him. And so mm. he's trying to stand up. You can see in that incident, he actually puts his hand out to brace his fall, but because he's spun as well, his head clearly hits the ground. Mm. I think the confusing thing here is that for the first time, we're actually seeing this capacity to cause serious injury clause. So what we're seeing is that you are punishing the action, not the actual concussion. And well, so before that, it was, OK, can this player be concussed by a significant blow or not. So right now, we're actually seeing consistency from the AFL, but it's just a much harder grade than it ever was before. OK, so we're penalising the action. So we've got two from um, from Saturday night, I think it was. So Motlop, uh, in this first instance, he goes. He's, he's So he's gone and been offered a week the tribunal for this one. Now, I think that Dylan, uh, Duke, Dougal Howard's head barely touches the surface, but the action could possibly have him. This is one from pretty identical part of the field. Cordy's action, I, was, I would contend, is nearly identical to Motlop's, but there wasn't uh, uh, that, that one wasn't What's cited. What's you, Ralphie? Um, the Motlop one's really cut and dried. So Thursday night, they sent out a dossier to the AFL clubs. These are the things you can't do. Players head in the vulnerable position, one or two arms pinned, two in this case, mm -hmm. a dumping motion, excessive or unreasonable rotation. Motlop did every single one of those. But I do grant you that they are similar actions and I just think that the AFL felt like there was a, a fractionally higher duty of care there from Ralphie, Zane Cordy. Come on, I'm not defending come that, I'm just on, saying Ralphie. that's the decision Arm, they made. Arms pinned, yeah. two actions, goes to ground. Now, that, this is, uh, so I the action's the same. Yes. The action is the same but it's perceived that one is slightly more dangerous than the other. Yeah, I, I can't defend every tackle. Maybe Michael Christian said that there was less excessive rotation, so we're, okay. we're splitting hairs. OK, well, I've that's got... That's to be concerned, just be, oh, before you move on from those, Cordy and Howard, you know, they lean their head towards the ground. Like, are the players starting to play for the kicks as well? You know, putting their head in a vulnerable position to draw the free kick in play. There's no doubt that that, that, that is... 
that is a, a product of what happens in rule changes. We've seen players stand up and allow, allow players come and take them under the knees mm. to get a free kick. Right We've up, seen players moving. lead with a head to try and get a, a head high free kick. All right, have, ne these next three I want to look at. Um, the, um, this one here was last night. So Pickett was able to get his arm underneath but Jordan's leg was there and he slung. That was the action was similar. Now, this one's different. Nash hits Saligo. If it's about head contact, he's head contacted the ground. So is that is something we want? This is Rosham on Stengel. That was let go. Stengel actually broke his arm in this. But I'm pretty sure his head makes contact there. That was only three or four yep. weeks ago. Yep. Not sighted. So I understand all that. But he's the greater good that we are reducing the sub-concussions and, concu and the concussions and the head knocks. So I understand that there is going to be some um, you know, double standards about all that kind of stuff. But as Rossi Lyon would say, are we right now educating one to kill a thousand? Is the price that we pay that potentially Zach Merritt and Taylor Adams are not playing today, but the lawsuits that we are seeing down the pipeline are potentially going to be minimised because the AFL's making the changes. They keep saying 30 rule changes in 20 years. That's what the AFL would say. Yeah, well, I think that if, there's, if it's a medico-legal issue and they're making decisions so they, they don't have something on their hands down the track, that would be the only thing that would explain it to me. But we're going to get a whole lot more one- and two-week suspensions than we're getting now because if that's actually a fact, they're missing. They're missing about 10 or 12 a week. Yes, and do we want players rubbed out? 10 or 12 and a go, because I don't know what the alternative is. I would, I don't mind if they're going. If if we've got to break a few eggs to make the omelette, you know, that old analogy. And if we're erring on the side of protecting the head. But the frustration is when you see these other ones that aren't. I understand all that, yeah. I think all we would say, though, is that how many players slide in now and take players out from underneath the knees? We saw a broken leg in a grand final. We see very few so of those. So we're just in a period where we're going to have to live with this. But that's what the AFL would say. But we do accept head knocks. Mitch Duncan hit uh, Fox really mm -hmm. hard now yep. and, and was perceived to have no other option to contest that ball. Um, Brayshaw was knocked out Liberatore, even though... That, and that was a slide under the under the legs. And, Brayshaw, and Liberatore led with his head because he was... because he's been encouraged to do that, because the rules have said. Mm. My, my solution to this is it's not about the action at all. Let's just do it from the outcome. So if there is head contact, if concussion protocols are triggered... Well, then that's a week. So the risk is on the tackler but you for should... whatever action you choose, but the outcome is based on on, on basically what happens from a concussion So protocol. I tackle John Brown, who's had 12 concussions, and he gets a, I get a week. Tackle you, who hasn't got a history, all of a sudden, move along. But there's, that... still, there's still going to be grey area, absolutely, but I think then we're going to avoid giving guys weeks yeah. for something that is inconsequential. Yeah, I think you're right, and I think we're going to get to a grand final, or certainly a big finals, and a player will get rubbed Imagine out. Imagine that. It's going to be unbelievable. Why can't we just pay the free kick? If the player hasn't been injured, we'll just pay the free kick. Well, in half of those, they even weren't paid. No, like, Taylor Absolutely. Adams didn't give a free kick away against Ross. Absolutely. Uh, the other thing I, f I find quite ironic about it, in rugby league, uh, they they are trying to stamp out uh, potentially what our players, our AFL players, are going to move to from a tackling technique. The hip drop's been problematic. So look at Cam Rayner on the weekend. That is a dangerous... Could have broken an ankle. Could have broken an ankle. So this is a huge debate in rugby league at the moment. They're trying to wipe this action out. The hip drop. So putting knees and legs in danger. So are we now forcing our players to do what rugby league is trying to stamp out? <laughs> There's always a consequence because <laughs> you saw an action. Did, did you not see the, the Collingwood um, the vision? We're, we're practising that Practising hip the so, hip drop. OK, so the alternative to, to mm. tackling a guy to ground that way is actually to do exactly what you're talking about, and that's what NRL... They've been tackling a bit longer than we have, yeah. and they tackle a little bit more often than we do. So protect the head and not the knees and the ankles from well, the hip right, drop. We're going to snap well, the leg in half. There's, there's not too many class actions for hip issues. There's a few for, for concussions, though. So, I mean, what, what's the greater evil there? I understand all you're saying about, you know, second uh, double standards and stuff, but I just think that this is the way we're going and this is the way that's going to protect players for the next 100 years if we want this okay. game to continue. Players Let's protect players. Wrapping this up then. So, are you prepared, and uh, as, com as the commentary, to sit back and, as Ralphie says, we're just going to have to wear this. There's going to be the odd little bit of inconsistency, but for the greater good than hope in the second half of the year and in years to come that we won't be seeing any of this. No, what I'm hoping... Todd Curley ran into an umpire and got eight weeks, I reckon, like about 10, 15 mm. years ago. And, and, and then... Yeah. Like he, but that was when umpire contact became a thing. I saw Jeremy Cameron run headlong into an umpire. That would have been weeks, three, three years ago, six years ago. But we understand that 
they, they, these things happen. Accidents. So, so we can't now hold the player accountable for umpire contact. We saw Taylor Walker run into an umpire. He would have got a week or two five years mm. ago. I think this is like that, like dissent. We've got to come back off this. It's too, it's, it's too difficult for the players. But we're talking about this thing. We're talking oh. about this thing. Well, you're running out onto a football field. Yeah, I know that. In a contact game. We're what do we expect? We're, we're going to try and mitigate it. Bucks, we, is, we not Bucks yeah. is not saying, you know, don't penalise it. You can still get a free kick against you for an, for an action, yeah. and you get suspended if a player gets hurt. Yeah. So surely those two mechanisms are going to wipe, are going to help mitigate or help slow down the actual tackle. I don't think tackle. the free kick will be the deterrent. I think they'll still run the risk. I saw I saw Nathan Kruger go for a hanger today yeah. and put his knee fair square in the back of Zerk Thatcher's head. Yeah. Is that going to be outlawed in a, in, a, in, a, in a year or so? Yeah, but there are some things you can do to reduce concussion. You can't do it in market well, contests. Well, this is the way. This is the new front. So you're not going to be able to jump on an opposition player no, soon. We're because, never going to be able to head take that out of the game. Ding, but there ding. are some things we can do, and ding, if we're ding. not trying to take it out of the game, we're in dangerous uh, straits. Seconds out. I enjoyed it. Well done.